You watch a TV program where the doctor gets the patient to blow into a paper bag like that and it fixes what was wrong with them? Ever wondered why? Well, watch this video and by the end, hopefully you'll understand. Because today we're going to be talking to you about the control of blood pH in the human body. Most of you will be familiar with the idea of pH and that the scale goes from 0 to 14 and that it's chemically defined as the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And what that means, really, is that strong acids have a low pH and a high hydrogen ion concentration, and that strong alkalis or strong bases have a high pH and a low hydrogen ion concentration. For optimal health, our tissues and organ systems need to maintain pH within a particular range. For example, our kidneys produce urine in the range of pH 5.5 to 6.5. Our stomach produces digestive juices in the range of pH 1.5 to 3.5, and our small intestine neutralizes those juices by having a pH of 7 to 8.5. Now blood has a very narrow pH range with which it can operate, pH 7.35 to 7.45. Anything outside of that range can lead to some serious health consequences. So how do our cells embody maintain and make sure that our blood stays within that narrow range? Well, the answer is chemical buffering. So to resist any change in pH, our blood contains three principal chemical buffering systems. These are the proteins, that is intracellular and extracellular proteins, the phosphate buffer system, and the bicarbonate buffer system. So here's an example of a protein, and shown are carboxyl groups, which can be protonated or deprotonated, and amino groups, which can be protonated to form ammonium ions. Now, any physiological process that tries to increase the pH, for example, the release of hydroxyl ions, can be resisted by the liberation of protons from the amino groups and the ammonium ions. A byproduct of this is the production of water. Conversely, any physiological process that tries to decrease the pH, for example, the release of hydrogen ions, is met with resistance through the binding of hydrogen ions to free hydroxyl groups and amino groups of proteins. This resists the fall in pH and maintains the pH of the blood within a reasonable limit. The second buffering system of the blood is the phosphate buffer system. This comprises dihydrogen phosphate, which is a weak acid, and you get this through your diet and can be excreted through your urine. Being a weak acid, it can dissociate into hydrogen phosphate and hydrogen ions. Any increase in hydrogen ion concentration can be met with resistance through a change in the equilibrium towards the left. This reduces the hydrogen ion concentration by producing more dihydrogen phosphate. Conversely, any fall in the hydrogen ion concentration shifts the equilibrium to the right, reducing the amount of dihydrogen phosphate in the blood. This restores the equilibrium and brings pH back to the optimal range. The third buffering system of the blood is the carbonic acid bicarbonate system. This is almost identical to the phosphate buffer system in that there's a weak acid, carbonic acid, which can readily dissociate into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. However, what's different is that the carbonic acid is produced through respiration. Any rise in the pH through a fall in hydrogen ion concentration is met with resistance through a change of the equilibrium to the right, reducing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide dissolved in the blood. This continues until the hydrogen ion concentration is restored. Conversely, any rise in hydrogen ion concentration causes a shift in the equilibrium to the left, ultimately increasing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide dissolved in the blood. This continues until the hydrogen ion concentration, and therefore the pH, is restored back to normal levels. So how do these three chemical buffering systems in the blood result in physiological buffering of blood pH? Well, the amino acids in all the proteins, the phosphate buffer system, and the carbonic acid buffer system can work in the short term to modulate the pH of your blood. In a medium term, changes to respiration rate can improve and change the blood pH because breathing rate alters the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, which then can change the carbonic acid levels within the blood. So blood that's got too high of a pH the body automatically decreases its respiration, changing the equilibrium to produce a drop in pH through the production of hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. Blood that's got too low a pH results in the body increasing respiration. This causes a change in the equilibrium, reducing the hydrogen ion concentration and increasing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Lastly, the renal system can act to modulate blood pH over a period of hours to days. It does this through kidney function, either retaining hydrogen ions and excreting bicarbonate to lower pH, 
or secreting hydrogen ions and maintaining bicarbonate ions to increase blood pH. So what happens when chemical buffering and physiological buffering still can't maintain normal blood pH? The answer is alkalosis or acidosis. So blood pH needs to be maintained within a range of 7.35 to 7.45. But when the blood gets outside of this normal range, it's referred to as either acidosis, for a low pH below 7.35, or alkalosis for a high pH above 7.45. These can either be from a respiratory cause or a metabolic cause. So breathing into a paper bag increases the carbon dioxide dissolved in your blood, increasing the hydrogen ion concentration, decreasing its pH.